This window is dedicated to blessed John Henry Newman, one of the great churchmen, great intellectuals of the 19th century. The connection to John Paul might be the most tenuous here. He didn't canonize or beatify Newman. It was Benedict XVI who beatified him. But John Paul II was very much involved in the launching of the cause of Newman, and he had a great um, a affection for him, a great attraction to his thought. One thing you know, at the very top there we have two wings. John Paul writes the encyclical Fides et Ratio, Faith and Reason, and he said they're the two wings on which the human spirit soars to a contemplation of divine truth. Well, see, that's a very key theme for Newman, maybe the central theme of his, of his career, the reconciliation of faith and reason. At a time when, the 19th century, the church was coming under withering attack from uh, intellectuals, Newman sort of seized that moment and emphasized the compatibility of faith and reason. He's holding his great book, The Idea of a University, a set of lectures he gave when he was the rector of the Catholic University in Dublin, and it's a wonderful text, precisely on the whole nature of university education. So we thought here at the University of St. Mary the Lake it would be appropriate to show Newman with that. He's in his cardinal's uh, cape. Of course, the end of his life is a kind of an honor. Pope Leo XIII, who's depicted twice in our chapel, uh, made him a, a cardinal. In fact, Leo made him, was his first cardinal, referred to him as Il Mio Cardinale, he's my cardinal. So uh, that's Newman now in his cardinalatial robes. Up here is his wonderful coat of arms with the um, motto, Cor ad Cor Loquitur, heart speaks to heart. It says a lot about Newman's epistemology and Newman's approach to life in general. Uh, knowledge is much more than just the mind, but it often involves the heart. Um, and this is our heart speaking to the divine heart, our hearts communicating with each other and so on. I love this little symbol here on the lower right. It's a ship and with the star shining. When Newman was a young man, he went to um, Italy and then he, he went out to the Mediterranean and became quite sick. And the ship was stalled, there was no wind. And he almost died. But when he recovered from that, he, he saw a light in the night sky and he wrote his famous poem, which became a hymn, called Lead Kindly Light. So it sums up the more poetic side of Newman's soul. Here is a depiction of the great church of St. Mary the Virgin in Oxford. When Newman was an Anglican in the first half of his life, he often preached from that pulpit, and he preached some of the most magnificent sermons ever written in the English language. So that's why that's there. Um, here's a symbol of the Oratorian community. Newman becomes a follower of St. Philip Neri, becomes an Oratorian. The lower scene is, is wonderful. It's the uh, moment when Newman was received into the Catholic Church. So after several years of, of soul-searching and great intellectual wrestling, he hurled himself at, at the feet of uh, Father Dominic Barberi, who was a passionist priest, famous for um, converts. He was maybe the Fulton Sheen of his time. And Newman knelt down and said, basically, take me into the church now. And he said it was by the fireplace, which I think is beautifully depicted here by the stained glass artist. So it's Newman with his full uh, passion presenting himself to the church. I thought that would be an inspiring uh, scene for seminarians. So that's a, a window that um, is very dear to me. Newman's a very important figure for me personally, and the harmonizing of faith and reason I think is very important for these seminarians.